In this Goto tutorial, I'll teach you how you can add user interface sounds to your inventory and equipment panel so you get all those little sounds that need to pop up whenever you're moving items around. Let's get started. Before we get started though, in the closeout of the last tutorial, I promised you a tutorial on equipping and changing the appearance of a character as we equip it with different items. That tutorial is definitely coming your way. I just wanted to do this sound tutorial first as the sounds I'll be using in this tutorial are currently on an 80% discount. So that's a pretty hefty discount. If you wanna make use of that, I'll put some links down in the description below to both the promotion as well as the assets themselves in case you are watching this tutorial a couple of weeks after it uploads and that promotion is no longer available. So with that said, let's dive straight in. Before we dive into Godot and the actual coding, let's first have a quick look at the backend, the changes I've made and the assets I'm using and how they are structured. First of all, we got this item data table that we have already been using in the last couple of episodes. I've added an extra column D with SFX, sound effect, because you probably are not going to have a different sound effect for every unique item in your game. For example, Old Sword, Common Sword and Epic Sword are probably all going to have the sword sound effect. So with this column sound effect, I'm indicating that. So we got different sounds for sword, axe, shield, a lesser potion and a normal potion, a generic item, which I'm using for my loaf of bread and my chocolate cake. We got an, uh, a sound for plate armor and we got a sound for leather armor. Now, when we have a look at those assets, I have for each of these items, a drop and a grab sound. These come from the inventory pack, so you can actually get them out of there. I've renamed them a little bit. In some cases, I'm using uh, different sounds that were indicated maybe as armor sounds. That I thought like, well, these, these sound almost like a shield, so sometimes I've changed it a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't call it cheating, it's just, you know, the interpretation of a sound can be different per individual. And when you actually have an item dragging around, usually your ear hear what it wants to hear, and as long as it's recognized what's good I guess. So for each of these items I have both a drop and a grab sound so when you grab an item out of the inventory it will play a different sound than when you drop it somewhere whether it be an equipment slot or somewhere else in your inventory. So now that we know what the back end looked like and what we got we can now switch to Godot. We only have to add four lines of code and an audio stream player and then we're pretty much good to go so let's get into that. So now that we're in Godot, the first thing we have to decide is where do we put our audio stream player, the node that is going to be playing our sound effects. We could place our audio stream player under this control node right here so that both the character sheet and the inventory panel can make use of it. However, I tend to put my audio management and thus my audio nodes higher up into the scene tree. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail, but let me explain that just a little bit. I've normally got a scene handler as my absolute top node underneath the root. My scene handlers usually are doing the logic between, for example, switching from the game menu to the main scene or from the main scene to an end game screen. Now, when you put your audio stream players in your main scene or in your game menu scene, what you get is when you, for example, click new game, you're gonna get a hard cut of your music as you are removing the game menu from the world and instancing in the main scene. And you get a hard start when your main scene music starts. By putting, for example, background music audio players and ambient sound effect music players, you can fade in and out those sounds as you switch between the various main scenes uh, so that would be a main scene, an end game scene, or a game menu scene, you can fade in and out that music, make everything sound a lot better. Now, for the user interface sound effects, that's not really going to be important because those shouldn't be playing as we go from, example, a main scene to a dev scene or a game menu scene. However, putting all my audio notes in the same location makes audio management a hell of a lot easier. So I'm simply going to be adding it right here. We're going to take an audio stream player. That's just a normal audio stream player. The 2D and 3D versions are if you want to make sure that sound fades in and out automatically depending on the distance between your player and the audio source. That's not necessary for UI sound effects. So we'll just uh, put it here. I'm going to call it UI sound effects. And by putting it this high in a node tree, not only can the character sheet and inventory panel make use of this node, we can also have any other UI panel make use of it, and even various sound effects that we may want to play in the graphical user interface. So the node also is a little bit more multifunctional by putting it this high in the scene tree. So now that we got this here, now we got to add four lines of code, they're pretty much good to go. 
We're gonna start with the sound effects on the inventory slots. Right here on our get drag data function is the moment we grab an item from the inventory and we want at that point a sound to play. Specifically, we want the grab sounds to play at that moment. We need four lines of code for that. What we do is we first define the sound effect that needs to be played. And we can extract that from our item data that sits in our singleton game data. Remember, that is going to be this item data table where we can look in our SFX column. So we get our item data, we push the item ID that we know we're grabbing, we've already defined it up there, we look in our SFX column to extract the sound that needs to be played. Now that we have the name of the sound, now we need to get the actual sound resource. That's what we do with the SFX file definition. We load from our folder SFX, that's a new folder I got here in my scene tree. This is where I've added all those different sounds. We're gonna get the sound effect and we're gonna get plus underscore grab because we wanna get the grab sound whenever we pick something up. Now, as we've got that, we can now get the notes root scene handler UI SFX. So now I'm approaching that audio stream player that we've just added to the scene tree. We're gonna set the stream to that file we have just loaded and then we can play the sound. Now for the drop data, it's gonna look pretty much exactly the same. All we have to change is how we load the file and we have to load the file now, of course, with the drop extension instead of the grab extension. So I'm gonna put these four lines of code in my drop data function. I'll put it right at the start so the sound starts playing as we drop it in. We're gonna get the sound, we're gonna get the file, but when we get the file, we change the grab into a underscore drop so that when we look in this folder, we get the right specific sound for whether we are dropping or grabbing. Now with that done, we of course have to make sure that our equipment slots are playing sounds as well. So going to the code of my equipment slots, I've already added the code to it, done exactly the same four lines here on the get drag data and on drop data, I've added exactly the same four lines. Do notice that drop and that grab difference. Now, when we play the game, we can move around items. And as you can hear, I've got the sound pretty loud so that you can hear it. Um, and as I move around these items, you can hear how the sounds play when I grab and drop these items in. Pretty good if you ask me. Now you know how to put some sounds in your inventory. So the sounds I've been using in this tutorial are part of the inventory sounds and inventory sounds two packs that are part of this big bundle which is currently on promotion. If however you're only interested in these inventory sounds, which I guess is about 200 sounds I think, then actually buying those two packs separately for the normal price will be cheaper than buying the entire bundle. The entire bundle though does give you like 1800 more sounds with well, footsteps, spell, combat, blood, guts, gore, monsters howling and growling, a couple of uh, robot sounds if you're more into an SFX uh, or science fiction kind of game, various ambient sounds like howling wind, uh, rain, thunderstorm, all that kind of stuff. So definitely a lot of good stuff that a lot of different games are gonna need. And uh, yeah, I don't think you can uh, go wrong with that pack. So that's it for me for today. If you like this video, then please smash that like button, hit subscribe, don't forget that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on that next video. And I promise you the next video will be the equipping video where we're gonna change the appearance of our character based on the equipment we've been equipping it with. That's up for next time. For now, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later guys.